Hi, my little guinea pigs. Today, let's talk about the action cartridges, also named freeze cartridges, or maybe even a better name, cheap cartridges. And in particular, of the Amiga Action Replay Mark III. It has been created by Datel and it is the last of its generation. It has been created around the late 80s, early 90s. This video will be in three parts. In the first part, I'm gonna tour you around the feature of this cartridge. In the second part, I'll show you how to restore one. And finally, during the third part, we'll do a deep dive into the architecture of this cartridge and how it interacts with the Amiga. This cartridge, being the ultimate version of this series, has a ton of features. It has an integrated debugger, or also called at that time monitor. It has also a trainer to cheat at games. It has a Reaper. A Reaper is a tool to actually lift assets from a game, like the tracker modes or the samples. It has also actually a feature to crack protected games. It looks like at that time nobody cared much. Also a disk copier, a low level one, potentially also to copy protected games. It has also a compressor. So you can get like a chunk of memory, compress it to disk. This was called Packer at that time. They also added encryption, probably for the careful hackers. And finally, they even added a sprint editor. Let's check out how to install this cartridge. First, you need to open up the left hand side port of your Amiga 500 and simply you slide in the cartridge. To trigger it, you simply press the red button and you'll have the UI of the cartridge popping up. We're gonna deep dive into this later in this video. On the cartridge, you also have a little switch and when you switch it on, you can actually, with the dial, slow down your computer. It is very useful if you can't see something coming in games. Let's go deeper in the feature of this cartridge. For the first one, we're gonna select a game that really deserves this. Beach Volley. Yeah. I clearly remember you. You start in London, you make matches, hop from town to town, just to lose one and come back to London. The first feature I'm gonna show you is quick save. It allows you to freeze the machine, save its states, and quickly restore it. It is very useful if you encounter a very hard spot in the game. You save just before, you make your attempt, and if you fail, you restore your previous state and have another shot at it. It works by using the RAM as a backup. But the issue is that starting the machine, the cartridge doesn't have any clue about what part of the RAM is actually used or not. To work around this, the cartridge allows you to lower the amount of RAM the Amiga will detect at startup. So for example, here, I not only deactivate the fast RAM, but also I lower the cheap RAM. Obviously, you actually need an extended memory to be able to use this feature. Let's start this damn game and try to score a point.
finally got you. Let's save this state. For this, you use the command SQR, like save, quick, and restart. It will save the game in the upper side of the memory and resume the game where you left off. And that was quick, I already lost a point. So let's see how to restore the game where the score was at 1 to 0. You probably guessed it is LQR as load, quick and restart. So here we go, we are back at 1 to 0 and let's try again for 2 to 0. Let's move on to the trainer feature. It allows you to monitor the memory and detect any changes that occurs within. Here we're gonna try it on Rick Dangerous 2 and that's a game that is actually also happening in London. And if you look carefully on the top right, we have six lives. Right at the beginning of the game, we're gonna freeze the game and use the command TS6 like trainer star for the value 6, the value we want to spot in memory. Then use X to resume the game. From there, we're gonna try to lose a life as soon as possible to have the counter at 5. Push again on the button and let's ask it with the command T5 to find the counter that came from 6 to 5. So it found 3 spots in memory where the value came from 6 to 5. Let's do that again so we can narrow it down this number. Okay, so now T4. And here we have only one address that came from 6 to 5 to 4 with those three searches. This address is where the game is saving the number of lives you have. If you look carefully, the address is odd. And as the Amiga is actually a 16-bit computer, you can bet on the actual address is just one up on the even address. Let's check that quickly with the command M to dump the content of the memory. And here we have it, 0004, which is in 16 bits 4. Just for the sake of the experiment, let's put it back at 5. Yeah, I had quite fat fingers there. Let's check if it is really what I wanted to do. Okay, it's really 5 that got poked there. Let's start the game again. It still shows four lives, but it's just because the screen didn't refresh. Now that we lost a life, it refreshed the screen and we still have four lives. We can come back to the monitor and indeed we have four lives left. Now let's ask the cartridge to find the instruction in memory that actually decremented this address. For this, we're gonna use the command TFD, like trainer find decrement, and the address that the, the instruction tries to decrement. The cartridge quickly found 13C22. What actually happened there is that the cartridge patched the instruction from subtract 1 to subtract 0. So now, if we come back to the game, we basically have infinite lives. Let's try something more advanced. The MEM watches. This feature allows you to ask the cartridge to monitor specific addresses, and if the CPU touches the address, it will automatically trigger the cartridge. As you can notice, it slowed down a little bit the computer. Here we go, it found where the address 178AF has been touched. If we ask the cartridge to display the registers with the R command, you can see that the PC, or program counter, where the CPU is actually executing the instructions, is just at the instruction after the sub. It makes sense because the cartridge can only know when address has been modified after the fact. So it has to stop at the next instruction. We actually never seen this sub instruction. 
Let's fix that and ask to the cartridge with the command D to disassemble this piece of memory. 13C22 is coming from the, the trainer who found this address before. And here you have it, sub IW pound one, then the address we were monitoring before. It means subtract indirectly, meaning what is at that address, the word one. Now, if we ask the cartridge to patch again this spot, we can check again and see that the cartridge actually changed the constant from one to zero. The cartridge also has the reverse feature, meaning we have the command A, like assemble. For example, here I edit the same spot in memory, and instead of subtracting one, let's try two, just for the science. Here we go, here, by losing, we lost two lives instead of one. The last feature I want to show you is pretty classic, just putting a breakpoint somewhere in memory. You do that with the command BS and the address you want to put the breakpoint at. Here you have it, the game tried to execute the instruction at this address and the cartridge triggered. My little guinea pigs, this concludes the first episode on the Amiga Action Replay Mark III. On the next episode, I'm gonna show you how to restore physically the cartridge. Feel free to leave any feedback in the comment section and please subscribe to the channel to get a notification when the part 2 is gonna show up.